Like my stepmother used to always say to me, Yak Shamash, which is Polish for how you doing? I'm John Zadar, I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is Tuesday, January 10th. Now, it's my pleasure every day on this show to bring you hot OTC and penny stocks. I'm out there all day looking for stocks that can make us some money, stocks that have potential. And there seems to be a bunch of them, but they're not all in good shape. We keep seemingly finding these bankruptcy stocks coming off the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, which have got one foot in the grave, making people lots of gains, which is fine with us. Give us the money, we'll take it. Now, we do look at OTC stocks, we look at penny stocks. The difference, penny stock is any stock under $5. There's a ton of those on the OTC, but there's a ton of them on the major exchanges as well. Now, I can't share all of them with you every day. There are more stocks running than I could possibly talk to you about, but I try to share as much information with you as I can, and hopefully you're doing your own DD as well. To help, I'll give you that. That is about eight days worth of OTC market news. Oldest is up at the top, newest is down here at the bottom. And this is prime news. This is the events that make stocks move. Your mergers, your acquisitions, your uplistings, your bankruptcies, all that sort of news is in there. So if you haven't got the time to comb through the news, take advantage of my efforts, please, I beg you. That's why I did it in the first place. Now, when I do my research on an OTC stock, this is my go-to site without a doubt. Absolutely. This site is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. Folks, that is all the information we're primarily looking for. Your news, your filings, your share structure, financials, all of it right here updated every day. So why should you be out in the internet every day looking for current information? That's all this site has is current information. Now, I'm not saying it's perfect, but if you can't find what you're looking for here first, then you can go out to the internet. But I guarantee, start here, you're going to save yourself a lot of time and frustration. All right, so how did our OTC market finish today? Oh, God, I haven't refreshed this in quite a while. Look at our dollar volume right now, $1 billion. We better get a bump out of this. Come on, baby, give it to us. Oh, my God. Oh, no, that isn't a bump. We went from 1 billion to 1.1 billion. I cannot remember the last time we were this low, folks. It has been a very, very long time. Share volume, oh Christ, sorry if I offended anybody. We are at 4.7 billion. We're under 5 billion with that low dollar volume. And oh my God, look at our trades. 209,000. I'm complaining because we're stuck between 250 and 300,000. See what complaining gets you? The market is bad, bad today. I had no clue it was this sad. <sighs> Thank God I was doing my homework. There was actually a lot of news today. There were a lot of stocks running, and I've got some to share with you right now. <sighs> we don't like that. All right, let me show you what I got. First stock we're taking a look at is a New York Stock Exchange penny stock. This is ticker PRTY, party, woohoo! <laughs> this is Party City Hold Co. This is a brick and mortar business in trouble, just like Bed Bath & Beyond. They are just weeks away from filing bankruptcy. And when the news came out on the 6th about that, the stock dropped hard, about 52%, which <laughs> the way we've been playing these bankruptcies, just created an opportunity, and that's what happened today. She finished today at 45 cents with, well, it was just at 120, so we're getting aftermarket activity. We're down to 117% right now. Now, like I said, the company is about ready to file bankruptcy. They're in trouble, their revenues are falling, but this is to be expected. We're in hard times right now, inflationary periods. Now, I don't know if this company has a store online, maybe they do, but are people really gonna be buying party materials when they gotta keep the heat on and the refrigerator stocked? Probably not. Same thing with Bed Bath & Beyond. People just are gonna wait on their bedding until things get better. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Dun, da, da, da. Oh my God, <laughs> not bad at all. She jumped from 6.4 million up to 138 million. You're looking at about 500% increase just in her volume on bad news. Share structure for the company. 
I had to go look this one up as I do most of the time. It's the worst part of my DD is looking up these bloody floats because they're just not easy to find. There's a lot of numbers out there and you don't know which one's right. The best I can do is look for the one that's repeated the most often. They don't tell you the dates that they've gotten their information, just the date they're putting it up. So what I found, the one that came up most often was 107 million. Not a great float, but not terribly bad either. Financials for the company. Woo, look at all that money. Remember, we got three zeros to put behind any of these numbers down here. So that means at the end of 2021, they did $2.1 billion and they got to keep about three quarter billion dollars of that money. Their balance sheet. Well, they've got 2.7 billion in assets and 2.6 in liabilities, just like Bed Bath & Beyond. They just haven't got anything to cover themselves up. And you gotta remember, during the inflationary period, not only are they not selling as much as they used to, but running the business, the cost of operations has gone up as well. So they got money going out in both directions. They are in a bad place right now. Looking at their disclosures. Oh boy, we got a ton of Form 4s over here, don't we? Um, 12, 13, and uh, January 1st, we got a ton of Form 4s. These are filings whenever the insiders, the management, buy or sell shares. Now, we're not going to look at all of them, but let's get a flavor here. What's going on? All right, so the chief financial officer has sold, that's why it's red, 41,000 shares. Let's take another one here, see what's going on. Um, this is an officer. They sold 15,000 shares. Let's jump up to the top here. Oh, we've got the chief executive officer. He is selling 166,000 shares. Everybody is jumping ship right now. Everybody is getting out and getting their money before this company goes into bankruptcy. That's the way it looks. And then this 8K right here, this is a notification from the New York Stock Exchange that they're not meeting their minimum bid price requirement, which is a dollar. They can't stay under a dollar for too long or they're gonna get kicked off of the major exchange. But they file bankruptcy they're gonna get kicked off the major exchange. So the chances of them staying up there are pretty slim to nil right now. And did they have any new news come out besides the fact that they're filing for bankruptcy? Dun, da, da, da. Well, I don't see any news here. There isn't any news here. All right, so let's go take a look at that chart. I'll show you the big drop and how it just basically recovered back to where it fell from and then took some more. What's it gonna do next? We're now taking a look at Partey, ticker P-R-T-Y. And we're gonna be doing our charting on TOS. That's Think or Swim. This is the free trading platform they give you just for signing up for their free trading account. You don't have to give them any deposit or trade with them. What you gotta do is keep your account open. Duh. <laughs> and you can use this anytime you like, absolutely free. So, PRTY, six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble back here of $3.65 and then had a tremendous drop. She fell from three and a quarter down to about a buck 20. That's like 66% drop right there. And for months, she just didn't get over it, just went sideways. Obviously, some hope came into the picture here. We got some runs, but then she fell, and she's been falling ever since then. And on the 6th is when she hit her low of 15 cents. That is when the news came out that they were thinking about filing for the bankruptcy, and she took a huge drop. Went sideways for the last day and a half, and today she is running hard. Look at our technicals. Everything has turned the corner, and I mean strong. Everything is definitely pointing up at a very strong incline, and the volume has been increasing for three days since that announcement came out things have been getting better after the drop 20 day one hour view all right so we had 63 cents over the last 20 days as our high she got over that 200 once and then out came that article that they were filing for bankruptcy and she dropped here from 
36 cents down to 15 cents. Like they said, about 52%. She bounced off of that. You got all of the people out who were scared, who don't want to be a part of this. And now you get all the people coming in who know what the deal is. This is going to be a bouncer, a b -b 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 basketball bouncer. We're going to have the bad news come and then we're going to have recoveries. And this came right back up to that 36 cents and just kept on going. It says she closed the day at 45 cents, but I get the feeling she's higher than that right now. Our technicals, oh my God, folks, look at this. On the one hour chart, everything is screaming to the moon. Every one of my oscillators is launching right now. You cannot go wrong if every single tool is pointing up. Five day, five minute. So there was your drop came in the middle of the day, hit real hard, and as soon as it hit, it bounced, folks. There was no sideways action like we saw back there. She just started climbing, crossed her 200, laid on the 200, pre-market, after-market, and when the day started, she took off. And she's been running all day. Started here at a low of about 21 cents, and it's up to 52 cents was her high, and she did bounce off that. Looks like she's coming down, no. Look at that. She's still pushing, folks. She had a little bit of a pullback. I expect a pullback when I see a high bubble. Not a fall, just a pullback, and then it continues on. Well, that's what it looks like we got going on here. All of our SMAs are in beautiful position, the 9, the 20, the 50, the 200, all in the right positions. Our technicals. Well, they have a lot of strength. You can see our RSI here is in the overbought right now at 73 on the five minute. Our MACD is definitely above everything, though it does look like it's planing out a little bit. And I do see a wee bit of spread here between my PPO, this is my percentage price oscillator, a lot like the MACD, read it just the same way. I put that on the top in my ADX underneath, and whenever I see the blue line going up and the pink line going down, I know the price is going to go up. It's guaranteed. And if the blue line's coming down and the red line's coming up, I know the price is falling. That's just a guarantee. It's the way it works. It's one of the patterns I count on. Well, this is just barely pushing up right now. At worst, she's planed off, and this is falling. It looks like there is still strength here, folks, and this game has just gotten started. They have not filed for bankruptcy yet. That was just them saying they were thinking about it. So when they file for bankruptcy, we'll probably see another drop and get in and get another bounce. And when they go bankrupt, they're going to have to get off of the New York Stock Exchange. You can't be bankrupt on a major exchange. So they're going to be de listed. Guess what? That's right. Another bounce. Why? I have no idea. And when they come down to the OTC market, maybe a little while, a day, two, week, I don't know. But watch the volume because it will bounce again. And you can catch huge gains from each one of those bounces. Don't stay in. Take your gains. Get out. Wait for the next piece of news, the next movement of the stock. Watch it drop. Watch the volume start to build up, get in, watch it rise, get out. Pat yourself on the back for making money in a poor company. <laughs> Love these bankruptcies, I really do. And they are just coming every single week. Now this is a rare bird. We don't normally look at mining companies simply because, well, to tell you the truth, I don't understand the jargon. I don't know what I'm reading. I don't know if it's good news, great news, or bad news. So if I can't understand it, how am I gonna explain it to you? But in this case, it was a no-brainer. They came out with news today that they had done some testing on some of their properties and they hit gold bonanza. I understood what that meant, and you can see by the gains today, a lot of people understood what that meant. She finished the day at about 25 and a half cents with 370% gains, and that was not her high. She's on the pink tier in current, but we've got no other information here. We don't have a verified profile, we don't have a verified transfer agent, and these are important. If you're gonna be in a stock for a long hold, you wanna make sure they got all this information validated, so I'd concern myself on a long hold, but on a short hold, oh, get on in there. Get all you can get. So what was the relative volume today around this company's big news? Whoa, that's a nice jump. Wow, look at that. Only 879 shares a day. Nobody was paying attention to this company. And today she did about three quarter million, 706,000 shares. Share structure on this one. 
Okay, I did go look this up. Found a couple numbers, really not sure which one it is, but it's between 27 and 30 million shares. Close enough. So we've got a pretty decent float in DGDCF. Financials, is this company making any money? Well, they're not showing us any money here. Now that could be because they are a Canadian company. That's what the F on the back here means. Not that they're Canadian, but that they're foreign. That's a foreign letter there. And a lot of times these foreign companies will take their own financials and put them in their own countries, not here on the OTC market. So it's not that they don't have them. We just can't see them easily without digging through some Canadian files. Uh, let's see if we got anything on the balance sheet. Nah, we got nothing there either. Let's take a look at our disclosures. Uh, phew, haven't had any <laughs> disclosures since 2004. And look, paper only. That tells you how old those filings are. All right, and the news that came out. This is the news that came out today. Dynasty Gold drills Bonanza Gold grades. Let's jump on into that news. They tell us here that Dynasty Gold Core is pleased to release assay results from its Phase 1 2022 maiden drill campaign at the Thundercloud Gold property located 47 kilometers southeast of Dryden in northwestern Ontario. These are the best assay results ever reported from Thundercloud and constitute new discovery of wide zones and high-grade gold bearing quartz veins requiring further delineation. Now, I don't understand what any of the rest of this is. Don't ask me. I haven't got a clue. But I know it's good because they say we are thrilled with these outstanding results in our first drill program on the property. These drill results indicate a much bigger resource potential with higher grades at Thundercloud. The data will assist us in building a structural model and future drill target planning for resource expansion. And that's all we need to know. They hit gold. They got the mother load. They found more than they were expecting. And you know gold is always valuable. And I think everybody else knew it too. Even if they can't read this, you can read enough to know this is hot news. Let's go take a look at the hot chart. Would you believe we've only got nine days of trading over the last six months? That is a six month, four hour chart for DGDCF and that's all we got. So not only is she doing less than a thousand shares on the days she trade, she doesn't trade very often. So back here in April, she was at about 14 and a half cents. At the beginning of December, she had fallen down to four and a half cents. That's like a 300% drop right there. And today, she rocketed up to 36 cents before falling back to about 25 and a half. The volume, as you can see, is incredible today, but there wasn't much volume, right? There was about 700,000 shares. Just relative to everything else, it was a lot. Our technicals are very strong today. Everything is pointing up. Everything is still on fire and hot on the four hour. 20 day, one hour. <laughs> we got three days of trading in the last 20. This is on the 28th of December, the 29th, and then today. So this is the first day it's traded in January. The first day it's traded in 2023. And she jumped from that five and a half cents up to 36 cents. You're looking at uh, roughly 600% gains, roughly at her high. And she ended up with 370 today. On the one hour chart, everything looks like it's still pushing up. Everything shows strength down here on our technicals, though we're losing half of our technicals. We've only got our PPO and our MACD. No RSI, no ADX. What are we going to see on the five day, five minute? Well, that's not bad. That's more information we had on the last chart. So I'm not quite sure why she doesn't start at the start of the day. This is actually 10 minutes to 10. We're missing the beginning of the day. This is at 12 cents already. And then she hit that 36 cents, 300% gains here. Dipped a little bit, but for the most part, she's just been going sideways all day. Got a new SMA that has just come onto the board. Our 20 day SMA got a long ways to go before we get our 50 or 200. And we had a pop just at the end of the day, getting on top of that 20 day SMA. Our technicals are all weakening down right now. Everything is gradually pushing down and away. The only thing that jumped was our RSI. It did push up because of that bounce. Now, I don't know 
how great this is. I couldn't read all that technical jargon, so I don't know how much gold they found. Maybe you can understand it. Is she going to continue growing? I don't know. It's all about how much gold they found. But with that sort of run, I would at least put it on my watch list. If it doesn't do anything, no harm, no foul. We're now taking a look at another type of stock that I normally don't talk about too often. Stocks that are in the triple zero range in their price. The reason, well, most of them just don't move very far, very fast. You get into them and they turn out to be a long hold, whether you planned it or not. So that's normally why we don't talk about them. But if I see something going on, if I see some potential, sure, I'm going to share it with you. And I saw some potential. This is ticker GTCH, GBD Technologies. Now, GBT Technologies came out with news today. They had been granted a patent for some new technology that they've got, and I think it's going to be hot. I think it is going to be the standard around the world. Literally do. And when I was looking at that news, I looked at their other news and saw this isn't the only thing they do. They've got lots of technology. Technology, lots of patents. That means they've got a lot of intellectual property. Intellectual property is a virtual gold mine if it's good IP. And from what I've been seeing, this is good IP. So GTCH finished the day at 0007 with about 40% gains, though they were higher earlier. They're on the pink tier in current, and they've got a transfer agent verified, but they don't have a verified profile. As I said, you want to see both of those ticks if you're going to be in it for a long hold. If you're going to be in it for just a little while, be careful, but you'll probably be okay. So what is GBT Technologies about? GBT Technologies is a development stage company which considers itself a native Internet of Things creator. Developing Internet of Things and artificial intelligence enabled mobile technology. The company has a portfolio of intellectual property that when commercialized will include smart microchips, mobile application software, and supporting cloud software. The system contemplates that this is going to go global. The core of the system will be its advanced microchip technology that can be installed in any mobile device worldwide. And we're going to get to more of that information when we look at their news. So what was the relative volume around GTCH today? Not bad. We got about 400% increase from 21 million to 81 million. Share structure for this company. All right, I looked this up and I could not find anything that agreed. I mean, I found a lot of numbers, 487 million, 520 million, 1.2 billion, you know, just lots of different numbers. So I really don't know what the float is, but I can presume it's going to be pretty high. Financials for GTCH. I'll be surprised if she has any. All right. So for the last three years, I don't know what this is about, 2018, $14 million, uh, I'm not even going to consider it. Looking at the last three years, it's curious that they have $180,000 for each year and it didn't cost them anything. What I'm thinking is, is that they had a deal for one of their patents. They licensed this out to other co uh, companies that need it to make their products better and they pay so much money for it. And this looks like an annual payment. $180,000 each year, but I don't know. Let's look at the quarterly. Well, that's totally different now. Things have changed and they're making more money. Oh, a lot more money. They were only doing $180,000 an entire year. Right now, the first quarter, they did $269,000. Second quarter, $344,000. And this last quarter in September, $246,000. So you've got two, five, seven, eight. You got over $800,000 here when they only did $180,000 last year. So their revenues are increasing. Let's take a look at the balance sheet. Total current assets, $861,000. And oh my God, look at the liabilities. Wow, $23.2 million in liabilities. And they don't even have a million in assets. Ooh wee, I guess it costs a lot to do all this research and development on this new technology. Let's take a look at our disclosures. All right, we got a 10Q here, which is their most recent filing, the 1-4 September we were just looking at, and that's basically all we've got here. So let's jump on over to that news. 
Now, as I said, most of their news is about their technology, their patents, their R&D. They've got lots of headlines here. Let's take a look at a couple of them here. Uh, the company is evaluating the implementation of its intelligent financial and database management technologies for social media and entertainment mobile applications. The company has received notice of a publication for its microchip reliability verification and autocorrection non-provisional patent application. GBT successfully concluded testing of its Gen 2 long range radio system. GBT receives fast track processing for its layout blocks patent application. GBT received notice of publication for its integrated circuits geometrical design rule automatic correction patent. Lots of patents. GBT also got their 3D multiplanar patent approved over in Korea. And then the news that came out today, GBT's facial and body recognition patent application is granted. Let's take a look at that news. They tell us here that GBT's facial and body recognition patent application is granted. The patent described as an advanced machine learning driven image identification recognition technology. The IP can identify a person or object of interest live or within stationary videos or images. The described algorithms can learn features of a human face and body based on a computer or partial view where parts of the face or the body are covered. The system can identify an object's variations and identify body changes like weight gain or other health related concerns. We believe image recognition has become an increasingly important topic when it comes to security and law enforcement applications. We believe our advanced surveillance technologies can be used to protect the public safety, particularly in crowded places like airports, conventions, and shopping centers. Our patent describes a wide range of unique methods and concepts to identify the features of humans and objects, including the detection of hidden, harmful objects or persons of interest. And they've got lots of information here talking about how they can identify with their technology. Now, I was primarily thinking about just getting rid of passwords. I'm tired of passwords. I don't want to use my fingerprint. Somebody can copy that and duplicate it. I don't really want to breathe into something. So facial recognition would be nice, but they're looking at it for a lot more practical reasons, things that can actually help society and keep us safe. And I think that's a big deal. I think everybody's going to want to be on board with that. Let's go take a look at that chart and see what sort of growth potential she's looking at now. So we're now taking a look at Gitch, ticker GTCH, six month, four hour chart. Six months ago, we had a high of a nickel. And about 10 days ago, we hit triple zero five. Folks, that is a 10,000% difference between those two bubbles. Wow, wouldn't you like to get that back? Now, I know it looks like it's totally flat here, but it actually is rolling around just a little bit. But as you can see, it's not getting far. Technicals show a wee bit of strength today, but nothing to get real excited about. She is trying to push up, but there's not a lot going on. She has gotten on top of her 50-day SMA, which it's been a long time since she's been there. Let's come on down to that 20 day one hour view. Now this is why I normally don't like triple zero stocks. You get this picket fence, this barcode, where it just bounces between two numbers, five, six, five, six, just over and over, day after day, week after week, month after month. This one has had more excitement here recently. 20 days ago, she was at triple zero nine fell down to that triple zero five and bounced off of it very quickly the same day went up to triple zero eight got into that routine for many days of just bouncing between five and six and here today she launched opening up at triple zero six getting up to triple zero nine that gives you a fifty percent gain right there and then she fell back hit eight and then dropped down to seven right on top of our two hundred day sma on the one hour chart Technicals were hot, but they are all cooling off right now. You can see all of them are rolling over and pushing down. Coming down to our five day, five minute view. 
So there is your barcode, your picket fence going along for four days. Today she had that jump, hit her high at about 10.30 in the morning. Held that off and on through the day to about one o'clock in the afternoon when she did fall down to that triple zero eight. And at the very end of the day, she dropped one more notch down to triple zero seven, way above her 200, which she was stuck on all this week. So that is a good place. Technicals don't look strong though, not at all. Our RSI is falling right now and it's down to 44. MACD has gone under a prime line and is under the signal line now. And look at my PPO and my ADX. When the blue line and the red line are coming close together, it says the price is falling. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. So this says it is still falling. Now, I don't know if it's going to run. I'm looking at it for the potential. They've got lots of patents and they're applying for more patents with other types of technologies. And that one with the facial recognition, I think that's going to be big. Honestly, I think that's going to be picked up by lots of places that want to keep their environment safe. And all that other technology they have, God only knows what it can be used for. So more due diligence will help. So GTCH, it's got a lot of potential and it's at a very low price. But wait for that volume to come in. We haven't really seen it kicking volume yet. Last stock we're taking a look at is another penny stock on the New York Stock Exchange. This is Boxed, ticker B-O-X-D, Boxed Inc. They had some big news come out today. They released one of their new products, Spresso, which goes on to the Google Cloud, and this is to help businesses make as much profit as they possibly can from online consumers, me and you. And though that doesn't excite me very much, it definitely looks like it's going to increase their revenues by a big margin. So box finished today at about 55 and a half cents with 46% gains. Now we do have to concern ourselves with any stock on the major exchange that has a price under a dollar. There are minimum bid price requirements on the major exchanges, as well as other requirements, shareholder value, market cap. They got lots of minimum requirements. Well, they have failed to meet one of them and they have been issued a warning back in November, though they're not in any danger of being pulled off right now. It was just a warning. So what does this company do? Well, I was actually able to figure out a way to show you the financials in big print and keep me in the picture. I just take a screenshot of it. So they tell us in their most recent financial that Boxed is a commerce technology company specializing as both an e-commerce retailer and an e-commerce enabler. We operate an e-commerce retail service that provides bulk pantry consumables to businesses and household customers. Founded in 2013 by an experienced group of tech pioneers, we have been a technology first organization since our inception. The founders had a simple idea, make shopping for bulk household essentials easy, convenient and fun so customers can focus their time and energy on the things that really matter instead of spending their weekends traveling to and shopping in traditional brick and mortar wholesale clubs with their families. From that initial concept, we grew into the e-commerce technology company that we are today with our own purpose-built storefront, analytics, fulfillment, advertising, and robotic technologies. Now, in addition to offering business to consumer and business to business customers with bulk consumables, such as paper products, snacks, beverages, and cleaning supplies, we have also begun to drive high margin revenue through our Spresso business, helping the world to stock up through our technology. Since our inception, we have been engaged in developing and expanding our retail and espresso businesses. We have incurred net operating losses and have generated negative cash flows from our operations in each year since our inception. For the nine months ended September 30th, we had a net loss of $94.4 million and negative cash flow of $77.9 million. So they're making money, but they're also losing money. And I think they're going to tip the tables with this news that came out today about Spresso. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, she's normally doing 1.7 million. Today she did 12.7 million. That's about 800% increase in volume. Share structure. 
had to look this up. God, I got to tell you, it honestly is the worst part of my due diligence. I hate looking up floats on these major exchange stocks. Looks like she's about 57 million on this. Not too bad. Not real low, but 57 is a pretty decent float. Financials for boxed. All right, at the end of 2021, they did $177 million worth of business. Got to keep about 32 million of it. On the quarterly, uh, they're doing about 40 million every single quarter. So they're about at 130 right there and they were at 177. Let's take a look at that balance sheet. All right, our total assets for the company, $119 million. Total liabilities, ooh, $190 million dollars. So they've got about 78 million dollars of debt right now. They definitely could use some increase in their revenues, no doubt. Disclosures for the company. All right, this is good news actually, folks. This is that 8K. This is when they got the warning. No big deal there. Then you've got all these Form 4s. Remember what I told you. This is when they buy or sell shares, the insiders, the management. Well, these are all buy. Let's take a look at just a few here. This is from one of the directors. He bought himself 100,000 shares. Let's take a look at one in the middle. This one came from Pearson Andrew, another director. They bought 100,000 shares. And let's just take a look at the top one. Yep, take a look at the top one, I said. <laughs> and this person bought 92,000 shares. And this is another director. What we've got here, I went through all of them. You've got about 600,000 shares that have been bought by the management of the company. That's a good thing. They believe in the company. And these just happened four days ago. Now let's take a look at that news. So we're looking at news that goes back to November. Their Q3 revenue beat estimates, and then they were reiterated as a buy from D.A. Davidson. Also in November was when they got that 8K where they were told they could continue to stay on the New York Stock Exchange. They were just given a warning. Then in November and January, they had two conferences that they took their technology to. The reason for these conferences is to stir up more investors. Get them excited. Show them what you've got. Show them your products. And that brings in more people. And then we had news that came out four days ago. Boxed Inc. announces exploration of strategic alternatives. I do want to take a look at that one. And the one that came out today. Box launches Espresso software as a service solutions on Google Cloud Marketplace to provide data-driven insights to joint customers. Let's look at these two. The one that came out on January 5th tells us that the company announced its board of directors with support of the management and financial legal advisors has launched a process to explore strategic alternatives, including, among other alternatives, a possible sale of the company. They could sell the entire company. In addition, the company in parallel is actively exploring capital raising initiatives and is targeting the announcement of additional funding within the next 45 days. So they're either going to sell or they're going to find someone to give them money and keep them going. The other piece of news came out today. They tell us that Boxed Inc. announces that Spresso, its software as a service modular solution platform, is now available on Google Cloud Marketplace, indicative of a deepening of the partnership between Boxed and Google Cloud. Now check this out. Google Cloud customers can now take advantage of Spresso's actionable insights driven by advanced analytics, machine learning, and artificial intelligence to better forecast customer value, predict churn, and optimize pricing for profitability and conversion. What they're saying there is they've got a program that can help these companies make as much money and profit from us as possible at our expense, but for our convenience, right? <laughs> and I think this is going to be hot. Everybody's looking for the way to make the most. How can we increase our profitability? And if they've got an AI program that can do that, help them set up prices, get the most out of every sale, and you get more information here about exactly how they do that, I think it's going to be hot. Everybody wants to make more money, and they're willing to spend money to make money. So I could see Spresso bringing in a lot of revenues for this company and hopefully turning things around if they don't sell the company first. Let's go check out that chart. 
This is boxed, B-O-X-D, six month, four hour chart. Six months ago, we had a high of $12.60, woohoo! And about uh, eight days ago, we hit a low of 18 cents. And you can see she has been falling it was real flat there, tough to see. But over the last six days, she has been climbing. She broke out over that 50-day SMA. Look how tiny these price bars are here. And all of a sudden, they get real big. And she started pushing hard. And once she got over that 200, the bars got even bigger. All of our volume has been growing during this period of time. And look at our technicals. All of them are pushing up in a very strong way right now. Lots of strength on the four-hour chart. 20 day, one hour chart. All right, so she was just scrolling, rolling downhill till she hit this low bubble of 18 cents, went sideways for three days, and then I'm not quite sure why, bounced off of that 50, got on top of her 200, bounced off to 200, and has started climbing ever since, looking like she's riding on this orange 20-day SMA, at least until today. Today, she launched up there to 67 cents. So from back here, where she started her breakout was at 20 cents. You're looking at 300, 325% gains at her high before she fell back to that 55 cents. Technicals are still blazing on the one hour. All of them are hot, all of them are pushing up, all of them look great. Five day, five minute chart. All this time, she's been growing. She went from that 20 cents up to that 67 cents, riding on her 200-day SMA beautifully here. You can see she just keeps tapping it and bouncing off. You'd know exactly when to get in. And then she launched here today, pushed away from that 200, hitting that high, falling back to her 50, and now is paying homage to the 50. And after market hours, she hasn't gone anywhere but sideways, pretty much waiting for that 50 to catch up with her. Our technicals don't show growth right now. Our PPO is about ready to cross over that pink coming down. Our MACD is falling right now underneath its line, and our RSI is all the way down to 52. But I think this company's gonna be making money if they don't sell themselves first. I think that Espresso, is that what it's called? <laughs> Espresso is gonna do wonders. I think a lot of companies are gonna to wanna to make use of this Google Cloud tool that's gonna help them capitalize on the profit margins they make from you and me. I think that's hot. I think that's what every business is looking for that sells anything online. So I'd keep my eye on BOXD. She's had some good growth. She's in a breakout mode right now. We could see some more growth. At this very minute, she is cool, but I like what I see. So we got four stocks today. If you don't consider all the news I gave you at the beginning of the video, I hope you take your time and go through that news, folks. There's a lot of catalysts hiding in there. Speaking of catalysts, party. You got the bankruptcy catalyst being played there. Haven't filed yet, haven't been removed from the market yet, but each time these things happen, the stocks in those boats like to bounce. Keep your eye on party. Then you got Dynasty Gold. Hit the gold bonanza they did. At least that's what they tell me. I just got to take their word for it because I can't read that jargon. That could continue to run. I don't know how big that news was. The third stock we took a look at was Gitch. GTCH. Got a lot of patents out there. They need to license them out. Every time they license out to somebody, they can make good money. And they've got that new one with the face recognition that isn't just going to be used on our computers for passwords, but it's going to be used in a lot more serious scenarios with bigger venues where people can be made safe using that technology. And last but not least, you got Boxed. Now, Boxed is selling goods online for themselves, but their new product, Espresso, so it's probably going to make them a lot more money. People like to capitalize on what it is they're doing. That is to say, make the absolute most possible. And I think that's what Espresso does. And I think people are going to see that. And that should help the company if they don't sell themselves. Time will tell. Keep up with these stocks, folks. Do some more DD. I did not cover it all. DD is where you're going to get the information that's most valuable. Not just mine, but yours as well. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.